good conference. And the uh, uh, first one had uh, just over 500 people. Uh, this one looks like uh, we're within about a dozen of hitting a thousand people. So, um, you know, I think that's a, a reasonable proxy for the growth of uh, this particular era of technology. So, um, you know, it's an exciting time to be in the high speed, high velocity, big scalable data space. So, welcome. Uh, I'm going to start you out with just a couple of um, organizational things to make your life easier over the next couple of days. Um, so we've got a couple of things going on this week. Uh, you'll notice some signs for something called uh, Big Data NoSQL Summer School. That's kind of a, a concurrent program we're running alongside NoSQL now. Um, and those sessions are taking place downstairs. As, as uh, registrants for the conference, you're very welcome to go to any of those Summer School sessions you like. Uh, the converse does not apply to Summer School folks who are not entitled to come to the conference. But um, certainly if there's anything you want to go to downstairs, feel free. Um, uh, there are a number of um, video interviews taking place during the week for those that uh, have been contacted by us in advance, uh, primarily speakers. Uh, those interviews will take place uh, starting this morning. You're on a schedule. You know what your schedule is. But the location is just in front of room 211C. So it's kind of in a corner uh, behind there where we hope it will remain quiet. Um, also, if you'd like to be interviewed but weren't on that invitation schedule, we'll be doing some more ad hoc interviews during the uh, exhibits at the Dataversity booth. We invite anybody who would like to express their opinion on the direction of the industry to come talk to us uh, or talk to us about your company. We share all that, that video with you and um, uh, so you can use it for your own purposes at a later date. Uh, we do have a fairly hectic schedule, so um, forgive us for perhaps uh, rushing you through things. Um, if you're carrying on conversations in the room as we need to get things started, we'll have to usher you out, but there's plenty of hallway space to do that. Our exhibit's open today at 1 p.m. following Adrian Cockcroft's uh, keynote, which I'm very excited about. Uh, Adrian, if you've not heard him before, is the cloud architect for Netflix and just is, is um, probably the leading uh, implementation of, of cloud-based uh, um, computing, uh, you know, right alongside Amazon and, and Google. They're doing a fabulous job. And Adrian's going to sort of lift his message a little bit above the, the technology layer today to talk to you about some of the strategy, the trade-offs, business decisions, the risk management approaches they've taken in deploying the Netflix cloud infrastructure. Uh, I'm going to mention something because our conference co-chair and uh, his wife, Ann Kelly, their book called Making Sense of No Sequel is, is literally steaming hot off the presses. We just got, uh, just got a package this morning of them, and uh, some of those will also be available. I think the book signings will be at the Dataversity booth again on the show floor, and we're hoping that there'll be another one um, right from the presses for folks from Mondrian, and they'll do some signings as well. All right. Um, if you weren't with us for the lightning talks last night, I have to say I think it was one of the best bunches of lightning talks we've ever had. At this or any other conference, just some really uh, interesting stuff from uh, the relationship between quantum computing and, and NoSQL and data management technology through to some uh, product announcements, some uh, companies like Scientel and uh, Clustrix and Foundation DB who are making announcements this week, uh, new companies that I would highly suggest you take the time to have a conversation with because they're doing some interesting things. Um, and let me see, I think that's pretty much everything that I have other than to welcome you here on behalf of Dataversity. Uh, there's plenty of our crew here to look after you if you need anything. And uh, just uh, enjoy the next two days, make the best use of your time. Oh, one, one final administrative point. Uh, so uh, the, the way the room is laid out here, if, if you're sitting on this side, you need to, to get out during the course of the talk um, of, of the next uh, couple of hours. There is a door on that side, which is probably a little easier than navigating across the room. So without further ado, let's get into the meat of the program. Dan McCreary, thank, thank you. you. Gets away. I just want to make sure everybody realizes that 
really Tony that brought us all here together. Uh, our book, uh, The Forward, was written by Tony, and I asked Tony to do it because without Tony's taking the risk on this new idea of those people, we wouldn't be here. And it's because everybody gets together here uh, every year that we have gathered some of the best case studies and the best stories and put them all together. So I just want to have everybody give Tony a big hand for sticking his neck out of the Thank you. I, I'm, I'm very sincere about that. I think Tony really uh, has made a huge difference in our ability to, to build community around this concept. Uh, as Tony mentioned, it's our third year, um, and what Tony asked me to do is just give you kind of an overview of what's going to be happening and some strategies that people have relayed to me on how to get the most out of this conference um, and what we're really trying to do here. Um, I think a lot of people come in with the expectation that this is going to be a uh, programming workshop or a benchmark workshop or something like that, and it really is different. We're trying to create an environment um, that will bring in uh, a great program, great speakers. Um, we have done a pretty rigorous process of looking at the evaluations, talking to people about the best speakers, and we always try to bring the speakers with the top reviews back, and almost all of them have come back uh, again to give other presentations. But we also have a lot of new speakers that we're very happy to have doing some very uh, interesting presentations. So, you know, I, I think they're going to kind of, they're all centered, and so I think we're, oh, the cops have got out there. So. Yeah, yeah. Magic sink. Um, so one of the things we're most proud of at this conference is a very large vendor participation. I think almost all the major NoSQL uh, players are here. Um, the, the sponsors are, have been very good about understanding the need to educate our community. Education is really one of our primary objectives here, uh, to teach people about this topic and how it's radically different. Um, let me just uh, give you some pictures of what the world was like about five years ago. Before the NoSQL movement, we really kind of had these two major models, the relational and the analytical uh, models for managing data. Uh, after the NoSQL movement, we really had four new entrants, uh, the, not just relational analytical, but also this key value stores, these column family or sparse metric things, the graph databases and the documents. So why this conference? Because there's a lot of people that are still building things assuming there's only one or two models. And uh, one of the reasons that we started this conference was out of frustration. We were very frustrated. We go into a lot of companies and they would say, uh, we built the system, even though it's ideal fit for a document store, uh, we knew that our management only expected a relational design. We only had, we already paid for our licenses, so we thought we'd get fired for doing this. And as a result, they built a system that didn't meet the business need, wasn't as agile as their other companies, and, and they were doing a big disservice to their organization by simply not considering the alternatives. And that was frustrating, and that, and that really hurt us uh, when we had customers that we worked with that we knew there was a much better solution out there, uh, but we couldn't get their management to fit, uh, to accept it. And part of this, we couldn't point them to a book that showed them the alternatives. And so now we're starting to have that. We're starting to have this critical mass where it is socially acceptable, even within big companies, to say we're going to look at NoSQL and alternatives in the database architecture conference, uh, our uh, area. So why this conference? Um, I think one of the things about this conference that I love is that the products and the vendors uh, that are here are not actually using a 30-year-old focus. Uh, they're looking at all the changes in distributed computing and solid-state drives, and they're custom-building new software to take advantage of this uh, market. Uh, I, I know that I've talked to at least three vendors here that said we had to rewrite our software at the core to take advantage of this technology. And, and people need to know about that, about how those changes are happening, how they're going to get much better return on these investments. Um, the other thing that's happened in the last year is that we've had a few vendors and the NoSQL vendors that have met some of the needs of the enterprise, but now 
we're starting to see more and more vendors put in all the things that big companies want. They want enterprise class security, they want audit trails, they want uh, all the hooks for their reporting environments. We're starting to see those things happen more and more. And I, I encourage you to really go out and talk to the people out there, talk to the vendors, and learn from the stories. So we really wanted a conference where uh, people could come in and share the stories. Um, and I think that this is now more important than ever. Um, I think uh, one of the best examples is that um, um, we, see, we see these six different patterns. We see a lot of variations even within those patterns. Um, and we start to see anecdotal stories of people. Uh, just at breakfast, uh, I had a great discussion with a guy who had been working for Air Oracle, and been doing Oracle for years and years, and suddenly they realized that their new products weren't going to scale. They had a lot more data coming in, and he said they had to look at something that could manage a million rights per minute. Right. And how, how do you do that? Well, yeah, doing that on a relational database can be done, but it's also very challenging. So he went through a huge learning process where he had to completely throw out a lot of the old modeling techniques, uh, bring in those new techniques, and, and learn how to use it. And he eventually got to the stage where he could build things as proficiently in the new uh, uh, column panel store, in this case, for time series data, uh, that he used to be able to do in all time. But that takes time. So we need this conference now because there are real stories like that that are happening at this conference. We're, and we're seeing them and exchanging them. And this is a conference where people have a chance to actually share their stories, both the good side and, and the bad side of these things, and how they do it. Um, I think one of the things you'll find is that there's not a single vendor here that's going to even claim that they have all the solutions for all the different kinds of problems and use cases. Um, and that means that it's harder and harder to figure out how to match those things. Um, and you're going to hear stories from people about how they have solved specific problems. It's a very uh, good and enlightening things. Um, we think that making the right architectural choice now is more important than ever. And we hope to give you a conference that really uh, provides that information. Uh, a couple things that we're um, not going to focus on. Uh, we are we don't really want to be um, an academic conference with peer-reviewed papers. Um, the number of papers that come out and, and that usually lag quite a bit. Uh, we want to allow people to come in and have a developer who's playing with new technologies and playing with it for three months. And it's not get a peer-reviewed project, but Nathan is a really good example of a guy who's working on a storm architecture. Uh, for uh, high throughput things on the new uh, architecture. And he's not going to submit a peer review paper, but we have him here as a keynote, and we think he'll be a great uh, way for you to learn some of these things a little easier. Uh, we don't actually also want to be focused on uh, the fancy uh, GUIs. Um, this is not really just the superficial demos. That being said, uh, one of the things that people care about is monitorability. And we're seeing some really nice graphical front ends for monitoring. Uh, the back ends of databases, but we want to make sure we go beyond that. Uh, this is not a conference for just talking about one dimensional benchmarks. Uh, I think it is great that you can set up an Amazon cluster like uh, uh, Adrian does and run a million rights per second through Cassandra. He'll talk about that process, but it's not the benchmark that's important. Uh, and the reason is that the workload that Netflix sees is going to be very different than the workload that you guys see. So one of the first things we want to make sure everybody's aware of is don't trust the vendor benchmarks. Make your own benchmarks. Build a benchmarks that you can use and then make sure you can test it against that uh, system. So it's not just about one dimensional uh, uh, writes per second or reads per second. It's about a lot of different things. This is not just about big data. Okay? If you look at the use cases for NoSQL, it goes beyond just the volume and, and the volume. Uh, it's also about different ways of deploying those systems, so you can add more nodes to your clusters without uh, having to uh, physically buy hardware. Uh, and it's not just about um, open source. Uh, many of the software products that are in space are open source because they're very new, and the ideas seem to move into the open source community very quickly. Uh, the good news there is that we see a lot of innovation in the open source area. Uh, the bad news is that we see uh, products that have been here uh, two years ago that are no, no longer on the, the scope. Because 
people have abandoned them and, and gone on to collaborate in other areas. So that's something that people really need to be aware of and get a feeling for the changing uh, dynamics of that open source uh, movement. Um, you're going to meet some really, really smart people at this conference. And this is, this is one of the reasons I tell Tony that if I had to design a conference where I could get the best database people in the world to come, this would be it. And we are getting those uh, things. There are great database gurus that are here. But one of the things I think you'll see, and, and uh, uh, the, the sessions that we've had in the last days have really proved that, you can walk up to these guys after any session and ask them any question uh, that, that you're interested in. These people are very approachable. They are also interested in your business problems. They want to know what challenges you have, and they want to know how people are applying uh, different problems to their uh, innovative new databases. So I really encourage you to go up to the, the speakers afterward and just introduce yourself, tell them what industry you're in, tell them what types of problems you're working on, and really kind of get their insights on what they're doing. Uh, this isn't an exclusive club uh, conference. This is where everybody can inter interact uh, with the best people in the database world. So what we really want to be is we want to be a place where users can come in and share their war stories. And it's not just the good news, it's also the bad news that we have to share. Uh, one of the things about these systems is that they often look really good in paper. You, you read really good uh, case studies on the vendor sites. You set up these systems and then you run into these roadblocks. And these are the things that aren't necessarily fatal, but we all have to share the strategies of overcoming these roadblocks. Uh, we worked on a project uh, with a federal agency uh, a while ago, and they were going to use an open source uh, piece of software, and they ran into a scalability uh, problem. They couldn't figure it out. And they, uh, but rather than stopping it and saying we're going to you know, go with a, a commercial product with a 10 times uh, larger license, they simply started posting the questions on the forums. And people answered those questions. And they realized that it was really a configuration problem they had, or a way of rewriting their queries in other ways that overcame those problems. So those are the stories of people who have obstacles and overcome them uh, that are important to share in this type of things. Uh, one of the uh, uh, conversations we had is uh, some people are doing this are, are have one developer that is doing a pilot project. And the uh, person this morning, I said, did you share this with your peers? Did you bring in people that were really senior and doing the standard design uh, at the high end? And he said, no, uh, Google is my peer. Right? I use Google to find these things. Um, and that's one of the things that we want to, the success stories want to share is that there's more information out there to overcome these obstacles. How do we find them? What are the communities? Sometimes they're very specific. Sometimes the error message is so uh, unusual, you can't use Google to find them. So uh, it's a place where not only, I think, the, the vendors and the participants, but we're also trying to educate the analysts. Education is our, one of the primary goals of this country. Uh, this conference, and one of the things that I, that I don't like to see is analysts that are using out-of-date information to give advice to their companies. Um, and we see this quite often where analysts that usually have a good reputation are, are not taking into account some of the things that we're seeing here, um, and that these analysts can actually talk to the people that are using uh, these new systems in a production environment. Uh, so we hope that the analysts really take away the information and, and integrate it into their reports to really show some of these trends. Um, I hope this is a place where we can go beyond the superficial, where we can really sit down and have a deep talk with the architects about why we're picking one, one system over the other, why certain things are better at sort of solving different types of problems, uh, why the innovations that we're starting to see uh, in the constantly changing landscape uh, really are making a big difference, uh, and where the adoption strategies are working. We can all look at these papers and see these, these charts about scalability, but if you don't have a practical solution for introducing a new technology into your organization uh, through a successful pilot project, uh, it often fails and your adoption of new technology is put off two or three years. So not only do we have to have good stories, but we have to have adoption strategies uh, that are successful. Um, one of the things I want to get you 
you should think about is some of these persistent questions that are coming up at our conference, and they're coming up over and over again. Um, this whole question of standardization versus diversity, we have several panels on that, um, and you're going to get a wide variety of feedback, and we'll always see that feedback of innovation means we write raw, low-level APIs very quickly to get things working. And yet we have innovative companies uh, like 23, 28, 10 sex that are um, uh, working on JSON, where they can actually run standardized query languages not against just one MySQL database, but port that to other systems. That means that we'll start to see third-party applications written that are portable across these different platforms, and the amount of usage of these systems will go up uh, dramatically. Um, what, what about the interfaces? Uh, ask the vendors, are you guys still at the low-level APIs, or do you think you'll have uh, query languages there are products now that are putting SQL on even key value store type of data uh, systems. Um, so there's a lot of different uh, solutions out there from third parties that are that are adding value to the existing systems. Um, there's a lot of questions about does the JVM really scale across large clusters? Um, I encourage you to go into the MapR group and talk to the guys from MapR and say, why did you really rewrite all this to do things? using a low-level C rather than a JVM. Are, are you really getting good points? And they'll answer that question. They have some very strong opinions too. Um, the security level uh, questions. Uh, when these new companies come out with a new system, they frequently don't put security at the database level, and yet for big companies that want to scale, now you're starting to see security added to the database level. Um, so you can actually have many different projects running in the same system with the audit trails that are all um, complying with and, and healthcare things. That's something we didn't have a couple of years ago in, in multiple clouds in the different architectures. Uh, the whole question about the master slave versus peer review. Some of these vendors are now differentiating themselves by every node in the cluster having a complete set of information uh, about how to distribute their reads and writes. And if any one of those goes down, uh, they can adequately pick up. That's taking over from a lot of the master slave things where the master is a single. So we're starting to see high availability options go up. And I'm really encourage you to talk about to each the vendors and ask them how are they dealing with high availability. And there's all the questions about consistency and availability. So uh, a lot of good questions for people to ask. Uh, I think this is a great place for people to meet the experts. And don't be afraid to walk up to an expert and introduce yourself. Uh, we want the developers and uh, the vendors to really be the core of where we're getting our information. Um, and I think one of the tricks that I use is I'll often go up to vendor A and ask them questions about vendors B and C's approaches. And they often have some very good and unbiased uh, view of that. So this is a great way uh, to, to see those things and look at those. The other thing I wanted you to do is start to look at your adoption strategies and figuring out how those things really work and how they don't. So a couple of requests. Uh, give us feedback. Tell us what, we, what you like about the conference. Uh, fill out the evaluations if you have a chance. Um, share your experiences. Uh, uh, even if it's sitting at, a, at a, a table with a couple other people, tell, them, tell people what worked and what didn't work. I encourage people that have stories that you can share to be a speaker uh, next year and share your case studies. Uh, if you don't, if you can't share your stories and you know other people that can contribute, uh, please share those. Um, and we'd also like you to tell us how we can make this conference better. Uh, and give you the stories that you need and information to make uh, great decisions uh, as an enterprise architect. So. All right, so that's the end of what I wanted to cover. Um, and I think what we're going to do is uh, uh, start to introduce our next uh, keynote speaker.